Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's corruption trial begins as President considers coalition government. Extended lockdowns enforced in the Philippines amid a surge in COVID-19 infections. Protesters demand release of detainees amid COVID-19 outbreak in Bahrain's prisons. And in our video section, we take a look at the Amazon workers' strike and the organization of workers-led struggles in Italy. In our first story, the corruption trial of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu began in a Jerusalem court on April 5th. The proceedings began following repeated delays due to the pandemic and the elections that were held on March 23rd. Netanyahu has been charged with fraud, bribery and breach of trust in three separate cases. He has been accused of accepting gifts from businessmen in exchange for favours. He has also been accused of exchanging favours for positive coverage in the Idiot newspaper and Wallan news site. Netanyahu has denied all charges. During the opening statements on Monday, the prosecutor accused him of making illegitimate use of power and using favours as currency. The case was being held, heard in front of a three-judge panel in Jerusalem District Court. On the same day, President Reuven Rivlin met with party heads as he decided or tried to decide who will form the new coalition government. Israel's fourth election in two years ended in a deadlock as per the results announced on March 26th. The Netanyahu-led right-wing coalition secured 52 seats and the opposition parties received 57 seats in total. However, Neither side was able to reach the 61-seat threshold necessary for a majority. According to Israeli media reports, President Rivlin stated that he could not see a way to form a coalition at the moment. He was speaking to the leader of the leading opposition party, Yesh Atid. The final tally of seats for the leading coalition parties is unconfirmed as some are yet to announce their endorsements. This is based on the latest updates available at the time of recording. We now go to the Philippines, where the, where, which has recorded over 100,000 COVID cases in the past 10 days. The country crossed 800,000 infections with over 8,500 new cases. The government has now enforced the Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ till April 11th. This will be implemented over Metro Manila, the Capital Territory and adjoining regions collectively called the National Capital Region Bubble. The lockdown was put in place on March 29th following a spike during the Holy Week. Local media reported that several hospitals in the Metro Region had reached full capacity in their COVID, COVID wards as of March 22nd. Cases have continued to rise despite extremely strict lockdowns and heavy policing. The government of President Rodrigo Duterte has been heavily criticised for its mismanagement of the pandemic. Experts have warned that people will be forced to leave their houses if the government does not provide emergency assistance. Local news portal Prapler announced that the government is only giving 1,000 Philippine pesos in cash or kind per person. This amounts to approximately $20. Several officials have also warned that the extended community quarantine will not be sufficient. They call for an expansion of quarantine facilities, contact tracing and mass testing. We now go to Bahrain where protests demanding the release of incarcerated persons, especially political prisoners, entered their fourth day on Sunday. Unrest grew following reports of COVID-19 outbreaks in the already overcrowded prisons in the country. The UK-based Bahrain Institute of Rights and Democracy reported that over 60 cases had been confirmed in the Jao prison. As reported by AFP, Bahraini authorities have announced that only three cases had been reported in the prison last week. According to activists, the prison has a capacity of around 1,200. However, the number of people currently being held there is at least three times more. Those imprisoned also include several political dissidents. Several demonstrations were also held on April 2nd, which was marked as a Friday of prisoners' rage. Rallies were held in over 18 districts in the country as people denounced the persecution of activists and political prisoners. AFP reported on April 2nd that Bahraini authorities would allow 126 people to serve their sentences outside prison. According to the public prosecutor, these people will finish the remainder of their sentences in a court alternative place. They will also be subjected to electronic monitoring. Bahrain's ruling al-Khalifa regime has drawn widespread criticism for its prosecution and persecution of opponents and dissenters. Human rights groups have also repeatedly pointed to the bad conditions in the country's prisons. This includes overcrowding, excessive use of force and lack of adequate medical care. In March 2020, Bahrain had finalized the release of around 1,500 prisoners. However, as reported by Human Rights Watch, opposition leaders and human rights activists were largely excluded from this process. And in our final story, we go to Italy, where thousands of Amazon workers took part in a historic countrywide strike. Supply chain and logistics workers, as well as drivers, went on a 24-hour strike on March 22nd. They highlighted the precarious working conditions, including high turnover rates and working, beyond, working hours extending beyond contractual terms. Their demands included COVID-19 allowances, health and safety training, and fair working hours for drivers. Here is Giuliano Granato from Potere El Popolo, the coalition to talk about the strike and organizing worker-led struggles in Italy. The reason they were um, struggling and they were striking uh, was that they are protesting for workloads or work conditions because they are a very hard condition. As in United States, as in UK, 
they cannot pee during the day work day. So it, it, these are the, the main reasons. And the other uh, important reason was a, for a political recognition uh, for the trade unions, because Amazon all over the world has the same, the same um, behavior uh, in related to the, the trade unions. They hate trade unions, Amazon hates trade unions, and they do whatever they can to eliminate trade unions from their um, workplaces. It means that in uh, many workplaces, people are hired just for a few months, two or three months, because the algorithms on the management of Amazon, um, after three months, workers are not productive anymore. But apart from economically productivity, there is another reason that is a political reason. They don't want to give time to workers to get organized by other people, by trade unions. So uh, the struggle was for uh, living conditions, working conditions, but also for political reasons, because trade unions need to struggle to enter Amazon workplaces, Amazon um, warehouses, but also uh, drivers' companies that are mainly small and medium companies employed by Amazon. They have no power because Amazon has the real power, but drivers has to struggle together with Amazon uh, warehouse uh, workers. And on 22nd of March, there was a first important day of struggle all over the Italy. In 2020, there was a huge increase in workers employed by these companies in the gig economy. Uh, for example, in Lombardy, in the north of Italy, the richest region in Italy, uh, there was a judge a few weeks ago uh, that had his sentence and he compelled the gig economy companies to hire 60,000 people that were not employed, but they were, they were contracted by these companies as uh, autonomous workers. The judge sentenced that they are not autonomous workers. They are employed by these companies. They, has, they have the right to a proper contract and to, um, and to uh, proper uh, working conditions. Thousands of, of, of riders right now and they, they are struggling from years. In the last months, they had also important victories. And, but there, is, there are many problems, with, obviously, in organizing with this kind of uh, workforce because of the contracts, because of the, work, the working conditions I was telling you before. But apart from the difficulties, I think the most important thing is that for years, academics, researchers, trade unionists too, were telling us that with post-capitalist economies, there was no space for organizing. There was no space for trade unions and for political parties organizing these kind of workers. False. These struggles in the last months are showing us that the conflict in a capitalist world is unsupremable. And the struggles follow the capital. Obviously, workers has, have a lot of problems, a lot of troubles in, in finding new ways to organize themselves, but finally they find a proper way. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.